Labor, Employment, and Human Resource Development, joined with the Committee on Ways and Means, is now called to order. Maraming maraming salamat po sa ating mga kasama dito Senado, ngayon din sa ating mga resource persons mula sa iba't ibang ahensya ng ating pamalaan at mula sa pribadong sektor para sa kanilang pagdalo sa ating uh, pandinig ngayong araw. The agenda for hearing today is to uh, discuss the measures proposing the reformation or revision of the National Apprentice, uh, Apprenticeship Program as provided under PD number 442 or the Labor Code of the Philippines as amended. We will include in our deliberations the House version of these bills, which was already approved on third reading and transmitted to the Senate. At this point, allow me first to acknowledge the presence of uh, one of the members of this committee, Senator Ramon Bong Revilla, who is uh, present online. And I would like to thank uh, Senator Revilla for providing me a quorum in, in uh, today's hearing. Uh, may I ask our committee secretary to read into the records the bills that are included in today's agenda and to acknowledge our resource persons present, both physically and virtually. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Senator Revilla. And to our resource persons, the agenda for today uh, that will be discussed are the following bills. Senate Bill Number 10-1083, introduced by Senator Strada and Senator Padilla. Senator, Senate Bill Number 1513, introduced by Senator Revilla. Senate Bill Number 1912, introduced by Senator Lapid. And Senate Bill Number 2088, introduced by Senator Mark Villar. All of which are entitled the Apprenticeship Training Act of 2022. For the record, the following resource persons are physically present from the Department of Labor and Employment, Under Secretary Carmela Torres, together with Assistant Secretary Paul Vincent Anjover, from the Department of Interior and Local Government, Under Secretary Juan Victor Liamas, present, together with Attorney Rona Rica Octavo, from the Department of Trade and Industry, Attorney Maria Teresa C. G. Faustino, together with Ms. Fe Avila. From the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, Deputy Director General Vidal D. Villanueva III. Present, Your Honor. Together with Mr. Uh, together with Director Floramel Joy Song Song and Attorney Joyce Balong. From the, from the private organizations, the Association of Schools, Universities, and Colleges, the Coordinating Council of Private Educational Association of the Philippines, or COCOPEA, Attorney Christine Carmina Manao, together with Attorney Williard Jung. From the Catholic Edu Educational Association of the Philippines, or SEA, Attorney Jaime Arroyo, from the Philippine Association of Colleges and Universities, Director Joyce Ann Samaniego, from the Philippine Association of Private Schools, Colleges and Universities, Dr. Antonio del Carmen, from our business groups, the Employers Confederation of the Philippines, Mr. Antonio Sayo, together with Mr. Robert Maronilla. From the People Management Association of the Philippines, Attorney Carmelo Aguilar. From the Philippine Hotel Owners Association, Executive Director Benito Bengson. From the Makati Business Club, Director Katch Ofilada, together with Ms. Bettina Bautista. Uh, from the labor groups, the Trade Union Congress of the Philippines, Mr. Carlos Miguel Oñate, together with Mr. Mark Christian Villena. Morning. And from the Senate Education Commission, we have the Chief Legal Officer, Attorney Joseph Noel Estrada. Uh, we also have uh, the representatives for on, who are virtually online from the Department of Science and Technology, Dr. Director Ruby Raterta, together with Mr. Ruel Sancho. 
We also have representatives virtually present from the Commission on Higher Education, Ms. Cynthia Mamawan. Good morning, sir. Present. Together with uh, Ms. Georgie Balanag. Ms. Georgie Balanag, are you there? And lastly, from the Trade Union Congress of the Philippines, who is also physically present, I think, Mr. Paul Cajes. We are still awaiting for uh, a number of groups who have confirmed, Mr. Chair, but they are not yet here. And that is all. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Comsec. Uh, Attorney Joseph Estrada. Uh, yung magulang mo ba? Idol lang tatay ko ng araw. <laughs> Opo, your honor. <laughs> Kaya ka pinangalan na Joseph. Tigasan ka. Uh, Taga Pangasinan ho yung father. Uh, malayo. Hindi <laughs> kami yung fake na Estrada. Ikaw tunay. <laughs> anyway, uh, we the uh, labor statistics of our country always reflect the need to make focused and uh, intensive measures to improve the employability of our people, especially the youth. The May 2023 Labor Force Survey released by the Philippine Statistics Authority, or PSA, the youth labor force participation rate was estimated at 33.8%. This is lower than the rate recorded April 23, April 2023, which is at 34.7%, and much lower than that in May 2022, which is 36.2%. Among others, such dismal labor situation may be attributed to job skills mis mismatch brought about the misalignment of education and training systems with the skills demanded in the labor market. Sa ibang salita, maraming kaalaman at uh, kakayahan ang kailangan ng ating mga industriya na hindi lubos na natutunan ng ating mga kabataan sa paaralan. As a, as a result, the school-to-work transition of Filipino youth is slow. An important intervention to address the perennial predicament is through apprenticeship, which provides practical training on the job, founded on relevant theoretical instru instruction. It seeks to provide the economy with trained workers by addressing the job skills mismatch and, in turn, improving the employability of our people. Ito ang dahilan kung bakit nakapaloob sa Presidential Decree 442, or on Labor Code of the Philippines, ang apprenticeship, na siya naman pinalawak ng Republic Act 7796 on Technical Education Skills Development Act of 1994. However, there is a need to further strengthen the existing national apprenticeship program to bridge the gap between the needs and demands of the formal education and training to those of the enterprises. Kailangan pa iktingin ang nasabing programa upang siguruhin na, na may angkop na kapasidad ang ating mga manggagawa upang epektibo nila magampanan ang mga responsibilidad niya atang sa kanika nilang trabaho. Ang aktibong partisipasyon ng mga organisasyon at kom kumpanya ay dapat din palawakin upang mas maraming oportunidad ang may bigay sa ating mga kababayan. For these reasons, several legislative measures proposing to strengthen the National Apprenticeship program Programs were filed in this chamber. These measures are among the priority bills of the 19th Congress under the Philippine Development Plan 2023 to 2028 which puts emphasis on the need to harmonize the existing enterprise-based training, or EBT, modalities and expand the provision of training programs being implemented within companies, which can be a mix of workplace training and classroom-based learning, and to institute further reforms on the apprenticeship program to make them more attractive to both the enterprises and the, pros and the prospective apprentices, promoting skills acquisition and youth employment. No less than the Department of Labor and Employment supports the passage of this measure. As a matter of fact, they conducted multi-stakeholder forums and consultations to ensure that the inputs and concerns of the various sectors are embodied in the Department's proposed bill. The revised apprenticeship bill is a crucial instrument to make both our people and our enterprises competitive and productive in the continuously evolving economic landscape. The fourth industrial revolution poses new and, in, and inevitable challenges. The Filipino workforce should be well equipped to immediately and effectively respond to them, hopefully through the measures that we will be discussing today. And before we discuss the uh, details of the, measure in the measures in the agenda, let us first hear from uh, Senator Bong Revilla, who has a, an opening statement. Senator Revilla, you are now recognized. Thank you. 
Pare, uh, good morning to our hardworking chairperson and my uh, very good friend, my best friend, Senator Jingo Estrada. And my kakosa. <laughs> and uh, dear colleagues, resource persons, and guests, isa pong uh, mapagpalang uh, araw sa inyong lahat. Uh, today, we are about to uh, discuss several bills with the same noble intention to help our youth gain more relevant skills and experiences which, which are necessary to be more effective members of our country's workforce. The National Apprenticeship Program, which we seek to strengthen today, serves to promote full employment of youth through training and development. This gives them uh, the opportunity to experience real working conditions, including work dynamics under a supervised setup. Uh, sa paraang ito, uh, nagagabayan natin sila sa paglinang at paghasa ng kanilang mga kakayahan at abilidad para magamit nila ng mas mabuti kapag sila ay handa ng maging ganap na manggagawa. This complements our efforts in the last uh, Congress which uh, advocated the inclusion of labor education in the tertiary uh, education curriculum. This was already enacted into law. Our aim then was to capacitate our students in their quest in joining our workforce, just as what we aim for when we filed Senate Bill number 1513. Alam po natin ang uh, kompetensya sa buong mundo pagdating sa trabaho. The competition out there is tough. Reklamo nga ng mga fresh graduates sa job posting years of experience, high degree ang kadalasang inahanap sa kanila ng mga bagong graduate pa lamang. At sa pamamaraang ito, ipinagpagpinapagyaman uh, at uh, pinagpapagyayabong natin ang kanilang mga kaalaman, talento at kasanayan upang magkaroon sila ng laban sa sa mahigit na competition ng ito sa paghahanap buhay. We are giving them a fair chance so that, uh, that the rel relative uh, youthfulness which is usually taken against them will not uh, work to their disadvantage. Kung may papasa natin ito, uh, nagiging patas ang laban at hindi nababawasan ang oportunidad para sa kanila. Dahil lamang sa kanilang edad. Uh, uh, we hope that uh, through this measure, uh, we will be able to break down the misconception of lack of experience which is usually attached uh, to the young age. Uh, ultimately, sa pamamagitan ng uh, apprenticeship program, natutulungan natin silang i-apply sa totoong buhay ang mga teorya na natutunan nila sa paaralan. That after all, is the very essence of education. It is not only a ticket for us to earn a decent living, but uh, more importantly, it is a gateway for us to be able to apply it in real life in order to make a difference. Kaya natin ito ang ating munting kontribusyon sa ating mga kabataan upang mas maihanda sila sa tunay na laban at mas magandang kinabukasan. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, I fully support uh, the passage of this measure. Salamat sa sipag mo, Pari Koy. <laughs> Maraming salamat, uh, Senator Bong, Revilla. If you have any questions addressed, uh, uh, addressed to our uh, resource persons, you may uh, proceed. If you do not have, just tell me. I will just listen okay. first, Mr. Chair. Okay. No Thank you, uh, Senator Bong. Uh, sa representative ng Dole, Yusek uh, Torres, uh, your thoughts on this uh, bill? Maraming salamat po. On behalf of the department. Yes po. Magandang umaga po at maraming salamat. Your Honor, Senator Jingoy Estrada, Senator uh, Ramon Revilla, resource persons, ladies and gentlemen, uh, magandang umaga po uli. Uh, allow us uh, from the Department of Labor and Employment to provide our views and recommendations po. Uh, the Dole Department of Labor and Employment supports the bills 
which seeks to create a national apprenticeship program that allows the acquisition of competencies. The bills definitely support the goal of promoting full employment, particularly bills 1083 and 1513 of and the helping the youth and the young workers through training and development. <clears throat> The bills further aim to enhance the apprenticeship program and reaffirms the commitment to support apprenticeship as a strategy for employment promotion, addressing skills mismatch, reducing youth unemployment, particularly Senate Bill 1912, as specified, and avoiding skills shortages. Also, especially in looking into in-demand, emerging, and critical skills of the labor market allowing a seamless transition from school to work, particularly reducing employment search and linking skills development to the demands and the needs of the labor market. Let me commend our legislators as the bills are geared towards increasing the earning ability of the workforce, as specified in Chapter 4 of the Philippine Development Plan 2023 to 2028. Particularly also, this has been specified and in detail defined under the Labor and Employment Plan of the Department of Labor and Employment for 2023 to 2028. First, it increases employability through modern TVET, an apprenticeship program aligned with emerging trends or demands from the industry. These bills are directed towards assisting in expanding access to employment opportunities of individuals since the program will be linked to 10 key employment growth sectors indicated in the Philippine Development Plan and the Labor and Employment Plan. And these 10 key employment growth sectors include agriculture, construction, manufacturing, tourism, health and wellness, ITBPM, creative industries, energy, logistics, and transportations. These sectors will form the basis of identifying the key apprenticeable occupations of the sectors. The apprenticeship program will also serve as a mechanism to serve the development of highly technical and skilled workforce. We need very a highly technical skilled workforce in the 10 key employment growth sectors, and particularly to ensure that we have quality jobs. Consideration should also be on sustainable development and environmental uh, concerns through greening the apprenticeship program. The apprenticeship bill has been identified, as your honor has mentioned, a priority bill of the Philippine Development Plan, as well as the Labor and Employment Plan. And we hope that the president will certify this a priority bill in the executive branch. Particularly on the declaration of policy, we commend the dedication in establishing a national apprenticeship program that will ensure availability of qualified manpower in critical, in-demand, and emerging skills. In the recent concluded International Labor Conference in June 2023, which Your Honor has been had the pleasure to attend also, the importance of quality apprenticeship has been emphasized more than ever. The ILO has adopted the ILO recommendation R208 on quality apprenticeships, and the recommendation provides the guiding principles and measures of promoting quality apprenticeships. The recommendation will provide a comprehensive approach and guidance in developing a holistic apprenticeship program for the country. We also commend the conduct of aptitude testing for applicants at, as this initial evaluation will help identify and ascertain areas of the enrolled program where the applicant needs to focus in enhancing their skills and competencies. We would also like to submit respectfully the in inclusion of the following provisions. Public employment services, Individuals who complete the apprenticeship program shall be required to register under the field job net, the DOLS or Department of Labor's online job search and placement for more job opportunities. Public employment services offered by the DOL shall be provided to apprentices who are not absorbed by the enterprise. 
It shall assist apprentices with the following services, youth employability programs, career development support to employment, career, and vocational counseling, assistance to first-time job seekers, labor market information services, and entrepreneurship development. Finally, the Department of Labor and Employment on May 29 submitted to the Honorable Senator Jingoy Estrada a version developed jointly by Dole and TESDA and deliberated by our technical committee on le legislative matters reflecting the objectives and views of the subject and hope that it could be considered and as part of your sponsored bill. Thank you very much, Your Honors, for the opportunity to contribute to our comments on the apprenticeship bills. Thank you, uh, Yusek Torres. Before that, uh, I'd like to... Uh, there is a uh, letter coming from the majority leader, his opening statements, and he wants to wants his statement to be inserted into the records. Komsek. Any, any one of you who wishes to have an opening statement in support of uh, these particular bills. Yes, Yusek Llamas. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Senator Strada. The Department of Interior and Local Government supports the passage of the legislative measures which all seek to provide for a revised national apprenticeship program thereby repealing pertinent provisions of Presidential Decree Number 442 as amended, otherwise known as the Labor Code of the Philippines. The Department recognizes the National Apprenticeship Program as an excellent strategy to help address the issue of un unemployment. This program, if implemented properly, can substantially address the gap with, between education and employment as apprentices will have the opportunity for immersion. We note, however, that the primary agency tasked with carrying the objectives of these measures is the TESDA and the DOLE. So, therefore, we deem it up to defer to the inputs of the and recommendations of TESDA and DOLE, Your Honor. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Joseph Strada. Pero ba nagpatubo ng bigote? Good morning, uh, Honorable Chair and... Uh, uh, members of the committee present and to my fellow resource persons on behalf of the Second Congressional Commission on Education, uh, nagpapasalamat po kami for including us in this committee hearing. Um, the EDCOM 2 is, um, is uh, convened uh, via RA 11899 and meron po tayong mga commissioners then from the Senate uh, headed by Senator Win Gachelian. Senator Sani, Senator Pia, Senator Cheese, and Senator Joel Villanueva. And uh, we're doing parallel efforts also in reviewing our education uh, system. And, uh, and it includes, of course, yung pong harmonization ng ating mga education agencies, including the TESDA. And uh, during our initial consultations, we have also identified, um, Mr. Chair, our priority areas, and uh, specifically on the tech book sector, we identified the following, and which we feel are aligned uh, to the bills under consideration for today's hearing. Uh, first is uh, the, ne the need for a needs-based system, projecting the demands in the workers' upskilling. Number two, the increased industry involvement and investment in upskilling, and ensuring quality in the provision of TVET programs. And uh, since the bills were under consideration today, also involve um, apprentices uh, who are also school age. Uh, we, we hope that uh, we can also participate in further deliberations. And we would like to initially put forth um, just three pumuna initial um, uh, considerations uh, for, for, for this committee and uh, on the following bills. Number one is um, we hope that we can expand the apprenticeship program to include participation of educational institutions and not only training institutions as provided in, in several of the bills. Also, in as much as the apprenticeship program involves minor apprentices, 15-year-old, uh, 15, 15 as young as 15-year-old, we hope that uh, there can be, a, uh, there can be a, a body in the enterprise level in implementing the apprenticeship program to look into the safeguarding and protection of of child apprentices, um, also 
the implementation of the Safe Spaces Act. Doon po sa aming initial consultation uh, sa sector, lumabas po yun yung marami pong reklamo ng mga, kahit yung nandun na po sa employment uh, after apprenticeship program, uh, who are victims of harassment and other forms of abuses. So we hope that can also be included. And then uh, third is... Um, we hope that we can also explore an increased participation of the industries in the determination of apprenticeable programs. Currently, yung apprenticeable programs or occupations are determined by TESDA. Um, and uh, it also includes uh, no TR um, apprenticeable programs from enterprises. But based on our consultation initially with the industries, it takes uh, six months to two years po bago ma-approve yung enterprise uh, um, applications, yung mga no TRs. So we hope uh, magkaroon po sana, we hope to explore that uh, body, baka meron pong pwedeng counterpart part from the private sector uh, composing the industry para po makatulong ng TESDA in uh, developing uh, training regulations or yung mga no TRs po uh, to just to expedite yung process of, of uh, approving um, apprenticeable occupations. Um, Mr. Chair, we will submit po our position paper to include our other inputs in the bill. Marami salamat po. Thank you, uh, Attorney Joseph. Any Anybody who wishes to... Yes, Deputy Director General Vidal of, of Pestan. Thank you so much, Honorable Chairman. Sa among pinanga nga Senador um, Jingoy Hercito Estrada and Senator Bong Rebilla, members of this committee, my fellow um, guest, ladies and gentlemen, Asalam Alaikum, Mayong Buntag, and good morning. On behalf of TESDA and our Director General, Secretary Soharto Ting Magudadato, let me deliver the authority's position on this very important piece of legislation. TESDA welcomes this initiative of the Honorable Committee and louds the objective of these proposed measures. In relation to the endeavors, TESDA is geared towards creation and sustaining of direct and indirect jobs aligned with the NTSDP or the National Technical Education and Skills Development Plans vision of the quality TVET for decent work and sustainable inclu inclusive growth. In relation thereto, TESDA concours with the objectives of the proponents and recognizing the role of TVET as major agent in the development of labor and manpower. With this proposed legislation by our brilliant senators, the new framework shall enable apprentices to be accorded with high quality training by equipping them with necessary skills and experience. Further, it will consolidate and address the skills mismatch through the development of the apprenticeable occupation in collaboration with the industry and, of course, the expert and practitioners. According to the International Labor Organization, the Filipino youth are four times more likely to be unemployed than adults. Moreover, the skills that the industries look for do not match the skills that applicants possess, resulting in high unemployment rate. Apprenticeship is one of the strategies developed to address these challenges. It is acknowledged to decrease youth unemployment rate, reduce skills mismatch, and improve the productivity and competitiveness of enterprises. Thus, the country recognizes the necessary to further enhance the local implementation and institutionalization of the program, a law to establish an apprenticeship program that ensures the availability of qualified human resources in the field of critical and in-demand technical skills through active participation of key stakeholders is also necessary. In our country, Mr. Chairman, the apprenticeship program is traditionally viewed as an initiative to lead the enterprise. However, TESDA, as the lead agency in the implementation of the apprenticeship program in the country, would like to shift this perspective from ha having a scheme of training within employment to the pro the program will now be viewed as training modality that promotes also a lifelong learning. With the new framework, an apprenticeship shall be able to get high-quality training 
by equipping them with necessary skills and experience. They will be directly guided by the enterprises in the career they have chosen. They will also enjoy the benefit allowance of at least 75% of the minimum wage, paid holiday leave, hands-on experience, and formal assessment leading towards a national certification. The successful implementation of the apprenticeship may not may only be done through the active participation of key stakeholders. It is a shared responsibility involving various sectors, including all workers, government agencies, enterprises, and non-government organizations. This is in accordance with, of course, the recommendation coming from the ILO, which is to secure the continuous support of stakeholders and ensure their participation in the apprenticeship program. TESDA, as the lead agency, needs to strengthen and build partnership with these stakeholders to generate greater collaboration. Developing apprenticeship program in close coordination with the sector, of course, with our mother agency, um, Honorable Senator, um, under the Dolly, will enable the country to be aligned with the international standards and cope with the demands of evolving labor market. Dagang salamat sa among pinangga ang senador, and may God continue to bless all of us. Thank you, uh, Deputy Director General. Meron pa ba? Huh? Attorney Faustino. What do you represent? PTI po. Uh, yes. Good morning again, Senator Jingoy. And thank you for inviting the Department of Trade and Industry in today's public hearing. Um, the DTI is actually still in the process. Pwede mo natanggal yung face mask. May konting ubo po. Ah, meron ba? Oh, sige. May konting ubo po. Kinabahan ba? <laughs> Sorry po. May, may box card naman ako. <laughs> so anyway po, sir. The DTI is still in the process of uh, putting together our official position paper in the proposed bills. Um, actually, we, we plan to consolidate and put together, together all the inputs and recommendations from the different um, concerned agencies of DTI. Okay. But right now, sir, even without the position paper, official position paper of DTI, we can already say that we fully support the uh, the National um, Apprenticeship Program Act, the proposed National Apprenticeship Program Act, and we are of the view that this is a long overdue amendment to the Labor Code, and we are actually, personally, sir, I was so glad when you mentioned in your opening uh, speech that uh, the amendment is also in contemplation of the I, industry 4.0. Actually, yun po, that would be one of the focus, of the many focus of the DTI uh, position papers when we finally submit it to, to the Honorable Committee po. Kasi po, uh, for DTI po, uh, under the Competitiveness and Innovation Group of DTI under uh, under Secretary Fita Aldaba, we have been focused on uh, implementing initiatives, programs, and projects po that would um, uplift po the current level of capacities of our workforce po in order for them to prepare them in, uh, for to take part in the opportunities that would be uh, open to all of us po kasi po we are ano na po whether we like it or not industry 4.0 is here and industry 4.0 po is characterized by extraordinary advancement in technologies which would uh, disrupt po the way the way we usually do business which and would truly compel us to adapt to this uh to the new industry uh, to the new requirements that the industry would have from us so yun po, let me mention po some of the initiatives that DTI uh is implementing right now specifically those that would uh that are related to innovation we have the philippine skills framework this is an initiative which involves the development of sector-specific and cross-sectoral skills framework that will guide the country's workers in enhancing their skills for particular job roles. 
Such frameworks will also help employers design design progressive human resource management and talent development plans and assist education and training institutions in revising existing curricula or designing new courses that are more that are more relevant and responsive to current industry needs and emerging market demands the psf's initiative uh, prioritized sectors uh, include logistics and supply chain creatives specifically digital arts and animation, game development. Aside from that, we also prioritize construction, manufacturing, health and wellness, IT, BPM, tourism, and food agriculture. Aside from the Philippine Skills Framework, we also have the National Skills Mapping. Um, and we also conducted the survey on human resource development needs of selected industries in the Philippines. So. Uh, this, is, uh, this came from the, mem the MOU uh, signed between the BOI, the Board of Investments, which is an attached agency po of DTI and the CHED, Commission on Higher Education, in 2020, which aims to develop initiatives that will promote and strengthen industry uh, academic linkages. So may pilot uh, industry na po itong national skills mapping. Ang pilot industry po is the IT, BPM, and electronic sectors. We also have po the Youth Can Make It Happen campaign, which serves as an early stage intervention by the government to build a broader base of globally competitive workers for industries with high potential for development. It recognizes that the younger we can uh, positively influence our, uh, our youth, the better it will be for the economy. So we are uh, conducting activities like uh, campus tours or academic roadshows, which are part of the initiative to inspire and motivate, and motivate young people to be knowledgeable about uh, opportunities, pursue their dreams, and make them a reality. So we also have an MOU on the upskilling of the printing industry workforce. It was signed in August 2021. Uh, the MOU uh, among the Board of Investments, the Philippine Trade Training Center, and the Philippine Center for Print Excellence Foundation fosters a collaborative partnership in retooling and reskilling the printing industry workforce, the advancement of technology in the industry brought about by the four, uh, by Industry 4.0. So the parties aim to utilize the digital fabrication shared service facility of the PTTC in training, skills building, systems enhancements, and technology adaptation, enabling the printing industry workforce to progress as productive, competitive, resilient, and sustainable enterprise. So, actually, meron na po kami mga initial na comments to the uh, ilang provisions po of the bill, pero ano na lang po, isasama na lang po namin ito when we finally submit po yung aming official position paper, which we hope to do the soonest po. When are you going to uh, submit your official position paper? Sir, actually, the target was by this week. Kaya lang, we are still waiting for the inputs po from the different uh, concerned agencies po under DTI. We have kasi po from the BISMED, uh, we have po yung MSME point of view. Meron po rin uh, yung from the... PTTC, which conducts uh, yun nga po yung mga training programs and Siguro, our regional operations group po, sir. Siguro, I would like to recommend all the uh, stakeholders concerned to uh, present their official position paper within two weeks. Okay, na ba Two do. weeks? Okay. Uh, Director Ofilada. Hello, good morning, Chairperson Estrada. Good morning to Senator Revilla, who is joining us on Zoom. Uh, as we stated in our position paper, Makati Business Club would like to reiterate our support for amending the apprenticeship laws. Like others in the business sector, I'm sure we're all frustrated by the difficulty in hiring despite the high unemployment. Uh, we see that this is because not enough uh, Filipinos have the skills needed to fill present and future jobs. 
Apprenticeship along the lines practiced in some of the most worker-friendly countries in the world will allow business to give more Filipinos this pathway to jobs or to better jobs. Uh, turning over to my colleague Bettina Bautista for the specific provisions. Good morning, Senator Estrada and Senator Revilla. Um, so we just like to reiterate for the record our position. Uh, we submitted our position paper uh, yesterday. Uh, so our position is in two parts. First would be the key provisions that we support. Um, number one is the sufficient apprenticeship period. Um, we're happy to know that the Senate plans to amend the apprenticeship period, taking into account the complexity of skills to be learned. Um, I think it was an initial concern of the business sector that the status quo apprenticeship period was a bit too short for them to ensure that their apprentices will adapt these skills. Uh, second is the 20% cap of total regular employees. Um, we think that this is a good safeguard, um, but we understand that this is only in the House version and in the version of Senator Lito Lapid. Um, but either way, we do think that this is a good safeguard. Um, third is the disability and accident insurance um, that is indicated in the versions of Senator Revilla and Senator Lapid. So we support that as well. Um, however, we'd also like to raise uh, areas of concern, uh, recommendations, and aspects of the bill in which we'd like to seek further clarification. Um, so first is the Apprenticeship Training Fund. Um, well, we understand that uh, it requires industries uh, to pay into the fund. Um, however, the succeeding section also states that um, companies can be exempted from paying the fund as an incentive. Um, so we don't uh, clearly understand what the mechanics are in this. Um, I think, sir, this is um, present in the three versions except for the version of Senator Lapid. You're reading the bill of Senator Lapid? Uh, no, sir. Uh, the apprenticeship fund, I think, is in the three versions. Um, there are four that we received. Yes, it's in the three. Yeah, so Senator Regina. Yeah. So I think the only version in which it's not present is the version of Senator Lapid. Section 21. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we'd just like to seek uh, further clarification on the mechanics for this. Uh, what would entail uh, the requirement of paying into the fund and what would entail being exempted from it? Um, yeah. And second would be um, the accreditation of training programs. Um, well, we understand, of course, that uh, TESTA being the body that will issue national certificates also has to accredit and approve apprenticeship training programs. Um, this would be okay. However, um, the business sector is just concerned that the process might be bureaucratic. Um, I mean, coming from the point in which they apply until the program is approved. So... Um, our, our concern is just when it, this is implemented, we hope that uh, the process would be seamless. And um, our recommendation that we'd like to give is uh, maybe the accreditation process. Um, there, there might be a role for the private sector to have um, a skills council. So maybe that can be explored. Um, and third um, is coordination with enterprise-based training. So. I guess not just referring to apprenticeship, um, which is part of enterprise-based training. Um, maybe there might be um, an opportunity to clarify some differences and overlaps of this program versus other enterprise-based training. Um, but that's it. Uh, in general, we are very supportive of the amendment. Thank you, uh, Ms. Uh, Bettina Bautista. Your uh, uh Inputs are noted and well taken, and we will have to discuss this in the technical working group. Yeah. Mr. Sayo, uh, what do you represent, uh, Mr. Sayo? The Employers' Confederation. The Employers' Confederation. ECOP? All right. And the Philippine Chamber of Commerce. We thank you, Senator, for inviting us, and we, we appreciate that you're you're giving this uh, bill more, more impetus that it needs. We, we have been working with TESDA, uh, every time they, they they look for support in in analyzing the programs, uh, especially in the implementation of the K-12 program. 
in as far as the tech walk uh, strand is concerned we we try to see to it that the that the tech walk courses are consistent with the industry requirements for the senior high school that uh, that took them unfortunately there are there are more uh, students that went into into the academic track that's why there is an impression that the K-12 program has failed. Uh, we feel that it has not. Uh, we feel that we just have to, to um, tweak it properly for it to be able to be more consistent with its uh, objective. So, uh, therefore, uh, you know, when you talk about the apprenticeship program, it actually addresses the requirements of youth unemployment, uh, which is very, very high. And it is also consistent with, uh, with the fact that most of our graduates, the cohorts that graduate from, from our acad academic institutions are mostly going to TVET or tech voc courses. So uh, there, are, there are very little uh, graduates emanating from, uh, from the academic uh, field. So relative, therefore, to the, to the apprenticeship bill, we, we seek the same clarifications, uh, uh, our offhand, our offhand uh, comment. Basically, we, we, we just need the, we'll, we'll try to do, do this in one month because we have meetings uh, with our Mindanao, with our Mindanao uh, uh, members. We have a conference in Mindanao. Basically, for small, for, for, for the medium and large scale enterprises, <laughs> Uh, we, we there is no problem in the even in the funding. Where we feel there there will be a big problem will be the small and medium scale enterprises, the MSMEs uh, particularly. The uh, the apprenticeship training fund derived from apprenticeship fee. Tingin namin magkakaroon ng sustainable issues, uh, as we might have a problem uh, convincing the in the value chain comprising the MSMEs. Uh, for them to, to, to go with the program. So we have to clarify that uh, portion. Uh, yung yung uh, fears ng medium and large-scale enterprises when it comes to uh, the sixth day as mandated by the labor code, there is a provision here that says that uh, um, there will be an exemption from the probationary employment system of equivalency. So tingin ko kailangan i-clarify na mabuti yun. Uh, it, it, it will serve as a hindrance if, uh, if we do not um, uh, address that. No? Yung, just to give an example, uh, Senator, no? yung, yung, uh, ang forecast namin doon sa mawalan na trabaho dahil doon sa electric vehicles, mga 2 million. And the, the architecture for batteries, uh, design and everything would be about 18 months. So we, we, we fear that the, the jobs that will be lost as a result of the inroads in technology over the next three to five years, you know, two to three million. Malaki, Senator, kasi yung ang laki ng shift sa electric vehicles dahil inalis yung taxes, no? And, and therefore, uh, almost all uh, automotive companies are, are, are getting into that. Ang mawawalan ng trabaho, yung mga sanay sa gasolina, na types of vehicles. So, uh, so if, we, if we go industry by industry, um, we would find out that uh, although generally the, the applicability of the apprenticeship bill is, is great, we will have problems with certain industries. Marami na ba tayo clarify. mga e-vehicles dito sa... sa Marami rin na, Senator. Nakikita namin yung, yung introduction ng vehicle, yes, oh, so. almost every month meron eh. So, marami tayong charging stations dito? Uh, dumadami rin yun. Uh, yung, anong yun? Yung, yung, eto yung mga luwabas dun sa surveys namin eh. Vehicle mechanics, vehicle architecture ng, ng electric vehicles, electric motor design, battery engineering and battery management systems, 18 months yung equi equivalency ng required at, uh, competency dyan. Yung charging stations, where, where are these uh, located? Hindi ko alam, Senator, pero yung, yung, uh, yung, yung mga branded... Uh, Medyo marami-rami sila. Yung, so, uh, sa nakalocate? Sa mga malls? Meron. Meron sa mga, sa mga malls. malls. Uh -huh. Doon sa, sa halap ng Mega Mall, meron. Sa Amerika? 
Halos lahat na sa malls, na sa yeah. sa Yes. So nag-uumpisa na talaga. Yes, Senator. Right. Eh, yun nga kaya uh, medyo nagkakaroon tayo ng problema doon sa mga jeepney jeepney drivers uh, and, and and all that, no? And uh, um yeah, if you don't define it properly, we 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 might have a problem. How do we retool or reskill yung nasa automotive sector natin? And how do we, pati motorcycle actually, eh, pupunta na rin sa electric, electric ano, eh, motorcycles. Eh. Oh. Oh. So, yun lang, Senator, we, 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 we try to uh, come up with uh, our position paper yeah. as early as we can. When can you submit your position paper? Sabi mo, isang buwan pa? Uh, isang buwan pa, Senator. Actually, marami na kami nakomentan in the past, eh, no, uh, nung panong panisa, Senator Joel Villanueva, nakita naman namin yung sa inyo yung pinaka-comprehensive. Eh. That's why I actually attended. No? All right. Uh, if you're... If the committee will give you one month to uh, to uh, submit your position paper, eh, tapos sila two weeks, eh, one month na rin kayo para... <laughs> 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 Salamat, Senator. <laughs> Meron pa? Mr. Gahes, PUCP. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Senator Jingo Estrada, and Senator Bong Rebilla. Uh, the Trade Union Congress of the Philippines believes that a skilled, flexible workforce is critical to the Philippines' wider economic productivity and international competitiveness. As such, the TUCP expresses general support for the concept of experiential-based apprenticeship training that um, yeah, um, we also believe that work apprenticeship is a powerful tool for fostering skilled workers, reducing unemployment, and enhancing economic growth by providing industry relevant training, practical skill development, and addressing all shortages. Apprenticeships contributes to a robust, robust, robust and prosperous society. However, as a tra uh, labor center, we are duty bound to post the following comments. Uh, number one. Um, the proposed measure should not be made applicable to all jobs. Um, there was a, propo a proposal a while ago to assist TESDA at the current league, who's the one uh, 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 granting um, uh, appro approval for the apprenticeship programs. TC TUCP recommends that apprenticeship occupations be clearly identified by the National Tripartite Industrial Peace Council, or NITBC, in the spirit of tripartism. Since it serves the main consultative and advisory mechanism lodged within the Department of Labor and Employment, the Bureau of Labor Relations, the NTIPC should first come up with an exclusive list of industries where apprentice program, apprenticeship programs are applicable. Furthermore, uh, TUCP also proposes that there should be safeguards introduced to ensure that apprentices would be regularized by employer after successfully completing the apprenticeship period. Moreover, the transition of apprentices is also crucial. Both apprenticeships offer and Successful transitions to the labor market depend on supply and demand. If there is little demand for newcomers in a specific industry or region, few apprentices' positions should be offered since there is little opportunity for regular employment thereafter. Um, with regard to the bills presented, uh, the bills presented could bring added value to the system, providing for certain minimum standards and bring a better coordination of apprenticeships. Again, um, before we proceed with the with the with the, with the following bills, strong, uh, TCP strongly suggests that it would be best to make a thorough assessment of the status of existing apprenticeship programs, if there are any, so as to suitably proceed with the proposed amendments. In this regard, TCP urges the Department of Labor and Employment to provide data on which employers or enterprises still use this approach at present, in order for policymakers to have a clearer view of the actual situation. Again, TUCP reiterates that all apprentices should be properly remunerated and covered by social protection in line with the national policies. Furthermore, TUCP supports the inclusion of the mandatory SSS and field health coverage as accidents and sickness happen in the workplace. Um, there is a comment. Um, we have a comment also uh, on the number of apprentices per enterprise, which was mentioned also by... Uh, the Manila Business Club, but uh, we propose that at least 15% of the total number of workers, apprenticeship should not exceed the total 15% of the work, workforce. And um, again, um, may we comment on the bill, specifically on the, the bill of uh, 
Senator Villanueva, the Enterprise-Based Learner Bill. Uh, it essentially defines who is a learner, a dual tech, and an apprentice. Uh, there's a real danger that workers may go through all these steps, defeating the right to be regularized after six months and work for years going through all these step ladder activities without acquiring the security of tenure, which is a real concern because, uh, as we all know, we are still fighting for the approval of the Security of Tenure Bill, and Tenure Act, and uh, we fear that this may further aggravate the situation rather than help out. Uh, lastly, um, TUCP generally supports these apprenticeship bills, but at least uh, we may go through the process of further studying it uh, thoroughly and uh, taking into consideration all stakeholders and all proponents in this matter. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Guys. Attorney Aguilar. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Mr. Chair, and all the members of the committee and my fellow resource persons. Mr. Chair, the People Management Association of the Philippines strongly supports the passage of the foregoing bills, seeking an improved, if not a revamped, national apprenticeship program, which is fervently hoped to not only um, contribute towards nation building, but also to gradually raise the country's um, regional, if not global, competitiveness. If at all, Mr. Chair, PMAP is fu uh, fully committed towards the development of um, the youth um, as human capital serves as the primary or main driver of economic growth and inclusion. As its advocacy goes, Mr. Chair, people's work can be realized and further enhanced as a means towards developing a glo globally competitive Filipino workforce. Human capital, Mr. Chair, is cri critical to both economic growth and inclusion. The prospects for con continuing economic growth in the Philippines will depend on its ability to harness the rising tide of techn technological advancement and, it and expand its high skill services sector. Um, Mr. Chair, um, our specific comments and recommendations to the foregoing bills, which are only aimed to fine tune the provisions thereof, uh, Mr. Chair, are in incorporated in our position paper, which we submitted today and some of which, your, uh, Mr. Chair, are concerned with the qualifications of the apprentice, the apprenticeship period, uh, which was raised by um, TUCP, Mr. Chair, uh, regarding the period of limiting the uh, apprenticeship period to six months in order not to circumvent the security of tenure. And we respectfully recommend, Mr. Chair, that the yardstick should be that the extent, if there would be extension on the apprenticeship period, Mr. Chair, the extent the extension should not be uh, so long so as to constitute a, a circumvention of the law of security tenure. And also one of our recommendations and comments um, pertains to the um, incentives as previously raised by the Makati Business Club. And lastly, Mr. Chair, as additional recommendation, in our pursuit to improve the national um, apprenticeship program, we recommend Similarly, as raised by ECOP and Mr. Joseph Estrada, uh, we recommend that we revisit the secondary and tertiary education system so as to incorporate, if not integrate, the, a comprehensive apprenticeship program in order to expose our youth to a real immersion um, um, job scenarios that would really make them competitive, not only locally, but also globally, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Aguilar. Dito naman. On the Mickey. Attorney Willard. Good morning, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Villa, and to the resource speakers and other participants of today's um, hearing. Um, for Cocopea, we recognize the uh, noble intentions of, of the bill, uh, indeed providing um, training and development to our youth with the end goal of um, giving them full employment upon completion of the program is a uh, is an important endeavor. Um, not only will this help the students um, well gain, obtain gainful employment, but it will also uh, help our economy uh, as the issue of unemployment which has been plaguing our country will also be addressed. And so uh, updating our apprenticeship program or uh, reforming it to be more streamlined, accessible, efficient, and uh, maybe developing it uh, so that it will be more, um, uh, it, will, it, it will be able to provide uh, our students the adequate skills and training or for employment is is an is, is a must. Uh, but with that, uh, Mr. Chair, we just like to uh, raise um, two points, uh, of, uh, two concerns on our end, uh, which may need clarification and which the good committee may also look into, uh, so that it may strengthen uh, the the proposed uh, bills. 
Uh, first is the possible effects of the proposed bills on the um, OJT and the um, yeah, OJT program of schools and uh, its curriculum. Uh, right now, the, the bills actually contemplate a dual training system, one in school and um, one, in plant, one in plant. And um, it also provides um, certain competency standards. And, and um, respectfully, this may um, ultimately affect um, or overlap with the curriculum and standards already um, set by, by our educational institutions. So uh, with that, um, as um, manifested or suggested by the, the prior resource speakers, uh, maybe it's advisable also to have um, more participation or to encourage participation of education, educational institutions in the uh, apprenticeship program. Um, secondly, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, the proposed bills are actually um, in, are intend to uh, provide a, a more efficient um, apprenticeship program, but uh, there may be other pro there, there may be provisions in the bills that um, unintentionally uh, provide a more um, bureaucratic uh, procedure that may ultimately discourage um, some enterprises or, or even um, students to avail of of this um, program. Like for instance, Mr. Chair, just one example. Um, the intended bipartite plant apprenticeship committee um, uh, under the proposed bill bills will have the authority or will be required to approve uh, the apprenticeship contract before it may be uh, given effect. And the committee will also be allowed, be authorized to investigate breach of contract and hold conferences for termination. Um, respectfully, this may um, provide a more complicated approach to the um, to the program which may not be the intended um, consequence of, of the committee. Uh, so these are just the two main points that uh, we have, um, uh, that we saw uh, based on our initial review. Uh, but we have also other comments, which we will um, emphasize and raise in our position paper, which, will we, which we will submit to the good committee, Mr. Chair. Uh, one month po. Sabay po kami, one month. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Maraming Thank you, Attorney. Dr. Joyce. Good morning, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Jingo Estrada, and Senator Revilla. The Philippine Association of Colleges and Universities, the oldest organization of private colleges and universities, sincerely appreciates today's invitation to discuss the reformation and revision of the National Apprenticeship Program. As an advocate for relevant and effective education policies, PACU supports the initiative of this Congress to pursue a healthy dialogue on the state of the country's apprenticeship program and its potential for improvement. It is truly important to recognize the vital role of apprenticeship in shaping a skilled and competent Filipino workforce. PACU is one with the, with the state in recognizing the need to promote quality apprenticeship programs that will lead to dignified and sustainable work both in the present and in the future. Moreover, it is just as important to commit to ensure the protection of the rights of apprentices and allowing for opportunities for their lifelong learning. The roots of our national apprenticeship program lie in various legislative acts, each contributing to its evolution and development over the years. Presidential Decree Number 442, as amended, otherwise known as the Labor Court of the Philippines, provides for the foundation, while subsequent laws such as the Republic Act 7796, otherwise known as the Tesla Act of 1994, Republic Act 7686, otherwise known as the Dual Training System Act of 1994, and in Republic Act 10647, otherwise known as the Ladderized Education Act of 2014, have further contributed to enriching this vital program. These laws and their respective implementing rules and regulations have been the guideposts for the implementation of our National Apprenticeship Program. PACO believes in the potential that lies within engaging in this process of having an open and public discussion on the strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities in our current apprenticeship frame framework. As interested stakeholders, we are invested in the growth and prosperity of the youth, the workforce, as well as the industries. We envision a future where our national apprenticeship program is based on a robust regulatory framework that will reduce the job skills mismatch and enhance the productivity and competitiveness of the workplace and of our workforce. We hope to be able to contribute to empower the workforce, young and old, to acquire new skills throughout their working lives. In view of our commitment to contribute in this process, PACO expresses its gratitude for today's invitation. We are in the process of consolidating our initial comments on the bills, and we will be submitting 
our position paper promptly. So lastly, as a proactive association committed to transformative education, we wish to express our interest in participating in the technical working group should these bills progress to such a forum. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Director Joyce. Lana? Okay. Merong phone-in question dito. Sino ba yan? Siguro makakasagot ito, Dolly or Testa. Gano ba kalaki ang job mismatch ngayon? Um, ang job mismatch po kasi eh, na may measure in different ways. One is uh, skills gap. Hindi nagmamatch yung existing requirements ng employers dun sa existing supply of the labor force. Another is mismatch dahil iba yung education attainment mo dun sa traba, pinagtatrabahuhan mo. So, hindi natin talaga mamemeasure kasi it's on varying degrees and in varying definitions. Kung sinabi natin skills gap, pwede natin masabi na yung underemployed and unemployed can also be a mismatch because hindi natin sila mahanapan ng tamang trabaho. Second question is phone-in question. Anong courses ang may oversupply tayo? Yung oversupply, if I may, yung oversupply kasi natin can be measured by looking into sino ba yung graduates natin sa higher education and uh, there is definitely an oversupply kasi nga may mismatch. Hindi sila nagtutug Yung mga graduates natin, hindi nagtutugma dun sa needed by our enterprises. Meron din tayong, uh, of, uh, not oversupply, undersupply of TVET skills because hindi tayo nakaka-employ ng right people dun sa jobs. And then yung ating quality of our workforce mababa kasi for the, because of the pandemic also and because because uh, marami din ang underemployed, marami ang nai-employ sa elementary occupations. So yung ating quality of our workforce is also quite low. Third phone-in question. <laughs> ano ang ideal na setup to make the apprentice more competitive? Hindi ko tanong to, ha? phone in lang to. Pwede. <laughs> Kailangan kasi... We... Ano ang ideal na set up ideal. to make the apprentice more competitive? Siguro more competitive and also in line with our local and global requirements. Kasi we have, doon sa aming in-identify na 10 uh, employment growth sectors, sila yung nangangailangan ng uh, employed uh, workforce, whether they're in, they're mostly in demand or uh, critical skills, to be more effective and competitive, our apprenticeship program should be able to define apprenticeable trades that should match the requirements of these different um, uh, employable and uh, these sectors, ten, ten key employment growth sectors. So, ima match dapat sila sa ating uh, in-demand, emerging, and critical occupations, then it becomes uh, more competitive. All right. Uh, just to deviate from the issues on hand, because I was interviewed by the Senate media yesterday with regard to the statement of uh, the president, which he mentioned in his sauna, that the uh, employment rate reached 95%. Huh? 95.7%. Can you comment on that? Is it true? According to PSA. According to PSA, not according to Dole. <laughs> we follow always the, the results of the labor force. How did they come up with the 95.7%? They usually conduct this regular labor force surveys, eh. so they they through the surveys they're it, able to it, count. It, it's it's yeah. a, a much higher percentage. Masyado yata matas yung ninety five point seven percent. 
Ibig sabihin, 4% na lang yung, 4.3% na lang yung... Umaba yung ating unemployment rate. Unemployment rate? Yes. Naging 4, 4.3%. Kung 95.7 ang... 4.3%. Employment rate natin. Unemployment is 4.3, pero ma mataas pa din yung ating under underemployment. Underemployment. So that's, I think, more critical kasi meaning that there are people not satisfied with their jobs and they want additional income. So you confirm na talagang mataas yung employment rate natin. Umabot na 95.7%. Ha? According to the statistics, yes. Pero to, kasama <laughs> kayo naniniwala dun sa, sa, sa statistics okay, ng PSA. Kasama underemployment. Ha? Official statistics, eh. So, ano, ano po? That's the official statistics. Senator, so naniniwala kayo? Pardon me, Senator. I think kasama dun yung underemployment. The underemployed sector is also included in that figure. Mm -hmm. Okay. As employed. Yeah. All right. Kailan ba ni launch ng department yung National Apprenticeship Program? Actually po, ito yung included sa TESDA law. It's a, it, uh, there's an apprenticeship program under the TESDA law. Okay. Uh, so How long has this program been in place? Uh, if you may, uh, you can Honor, answer. Um, on TESDA law, kasi napasa 1994, um, Your Honor. Eh. But um, to be honest, TESDA failed to fully implement the apprenticeship. Um, TESDA failed program. to fully implement? Yes, Your Honor. How did you That's say that? That's the reality. Huh? Because uh, originally, Your Honor, under the Public Act 776... You said that the unfortunately failed to implement this project. You mean to say the previous uh, uh, director who handled TESDA was remiss in his duty? Because there was an instance, Your Honor, where the apprenticeship office was... Um, abolish by virtue of an executive order yung rat plan po that was um, implemented in TESDA um, abolishing the apprenticeship office and since then um, hindi na po uh, fully na implement yung apprenticeship program your honor so now you're uh, bound to continue it yes your honor and uh Although nawala yung office, Your Honor, the apprenticeship office, may kukunti pa din na mga um, industries that um, participate in the apprenticeship program. Pero parang hindi siya nakatake off, um, sir. Okay, how many industries have already participated? Do you have I, any data? I can only provide you, Your Honor, since 2018 to 2022. In 2018, there were 404 um, industries and um, enterprises who participated. In 2019, 315. In 2020, naging 110. In 2021, naging 60. And for 2022, naging 66 na lang po, Your Honor. Bakit bumababa? Um, the problem of the enterprises, Your Honor, hindi clear yung benefit that they can get from the government. First, yung sa tax natin, um, sir, it's unclear, especially that um, my, let me look for it, Your Honor. Especially yung na-create yung create law, Your Honor. Yung? Yung create law. Um, this Republic Act 11.534, otherwise known as the Corporate Recovery and Tax Incentive for Enterprises or the Great Law, is applicable only to trainees enrolled in public senior high school and public higher education institution or public technical and vocational education. So those um, private um, learners or honor or are not covered within within this. Um, Republic Act. So, that, in a way, nakaka-turn off sa mga enterprises natin, um, sir, to 
participate and to implement the apprenticeship okay. program. Doon sa mga nabanggit mong mga industries and mga enterprises, ilan yung mga uh, apprentices ang mga nakinabang dito? Do you have any data to show? I can only provide you your honor since 2018. Um, dalawang figure to, sir. Um, there are those who enrolled in the program, but very mayroon ding na-graduate were able to finish the program. In 2018, 71,516 enrolled in the apprenticeship program, but out of that, 64,530 graduated. In 2019, 48,809 enrolled, 45,000 graduated. In 2020, dahil COVID na din po to, um, um, Senator, 9,790 enrolled, 9,443 graduated from the program. In 2021, 10,886 enrolled and 7,364 graduated from the program. And um, in 2002, 2022. 2022, rather, Your Honor, my 7,000, 9,785 who enrolled, only 6,519 we were able to finish the program. trajectory, pababa. Bumababa siya, sir. But we are looking at uh, for 2023 na mag-increase because we have already strengthened our partnership with... So ngayon, sa 2023, uh, as uh, of uh, June, as first of uh, today, your semester. Honor, I cannot provide the exact figure. We are still consolidating with our regional offices also. Sa so, so tingin mo... O malalagpasan yung 2022 and 2021? We, ano ngayon eh? We are optimistic, ano, Your Honor, pandemic? na tataas na din po. Okay. As sinabi mo, uh, the, yung TESTA failed to implement the apprenticeship program. Sa tingin mo, would, would it still be prudent uh, to put the program under, under TESTA? Yes, Your Honor, but we have also to see to it that the provisions on the tax incentives for the enterprises will also be secured so that investors and enterprises would also welcome this program. Kasi, Your Honor, regardless of how we market this program, if there's no clear direction on how we treat the expenditure of the enterprises participating for the program, we cannot um, encourage them really to invest on this program, Your Honor. And as uh, we have mentioned, there must be a clear collaboration between the government as well as the private sector as well. So we must clear in our bill, sir, we strongly um, suggest that we must clear this matter so that it will be a welcome to our industries and enterprises. And aside from that, Your Honor, if I may be allowed to um, push forward, we are also would like to propose that there must ibalik dapat yung apprenticeship office, Your Honor, para there must be an office within TESDA that, that will focus solely on the apprenticeship program all over the country. Because right now, Your Honor, um, it was abolished because of the executive order nagiging PIL o pinagsama-sama yung executive order of the president? For a while, Your Honor, a few seconds. It's an executive order number 366, Your Honor, issued in 2013 that effectively abolished the apprenticeship office of TESDA at Pinagsama-sama in the Partnerships and Linkages Office. Pinoy? Executive order by former President Pinoy? Yeah, um, President Mahapagal Arroyo, Your Honor. 
चलो बोले जी अभी बाबा पीनो ही दबा Your Honor, please correct me. The information supplied to me was wrong, but um, please forgive me with this. It's Executive Order Number Three Six Six, Your Honor. Um, dated October 4, 2004, um, under the presidency of Madam President GMA. Siguro maybe the si Teng, uh, si Director General Teng mga dadato, can, can recommend to the President. Actually, um, Your Honor, if I may, we are also exerting an effort to coordinate with the Office of the President, with our Secretary, as well as the Department of Budget and Management, OPCCB, for them to be able to understand and thereby revive this apprenticeship office of um, within TESDA, Your Honor. If our intention really, Your Honor, is to make apprenticeship program as some priority of this government, we must create this office again and um, make the implementation realistic. Maybe you could recommend it to the President through the efforts of uh, Secretary yeah. Laguesma. And uh, since uh, TESDA is an attached agency of the Department of Labor and Employment, we can make representations yes. to the President through Secretary Laguesma. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Attorney Estrada. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, just want to, to add to the discussion, uh, also to answer the question or issue on how to improve the, or how we can have a more successful apprenticeship program. Yung po kasing, uh, um, yung provisions ng labor code on, on apprentices, and we're trying to improve it. But there's also the implementation side of TESDA. And TESDA determines yung pong apprenticeable occupations while the labor code provides the provision on apprentices. I think yung pong, uh, based on our alignment meeting and consultations also with TESDA, dun po nagkakaroon ng problema on how we can have a more improved and successful apprenticeship program. Number one is yung pong mga uh, training regulations na apprenticeable occupations, yung iba po ay outdated na, at yung mga iba naman po ay kulang na, no? and they are initi initiated by enterprises themselves. And as I've mentioned earlier, kapag po ikaw ay establishment and you want to apply for training regulation, it takes six, um, six months to two years. So hindi po siya responsive dun sa needs ng mga enterprises. So isa po yun sa rason kung bakit siguro konti yung nagpa-participate na, na enterprises sa uh, apprenticeship program. That's number one. And nabanggit din po kanina yung um, incentives. Kasi po meron pong batas yung DTS law, RA7696. It was also enacted halos kasabay ng test the law. Uh, ito po yung nagbibigay sana ng incentives sa mga participating establishments including educational institutions na nagpa-accredit nagpa ng uh, DTS system where they accept apprentices. Nakalagay po doon, if I'm not mistaken, 50% um, ng expenses nila dun sa, sa training may be deducted in their taxable income. But despite that, we were also trying to find out bakit konti po yung nagpa-participate. And initially, what we're getting is um, hindi po nila talaga nakukuha yung, yung deduction na yun sa kanilang taxable income for, for various reasons. Uh, we also want to inquire with the BIR and the DOF. So, um, kaya po kanina yung aking kung, kung comment also from the experts that uh, we got uh, during the consultations, we wanted sana more, more involvement of the industries, yun po sa pagdetermine ng mga apprenticeable occupations. Kasi po, uh, uh, to be honest, napakatagal po pag sa TESDA, again, as I've said, six months to, to two years inaabot. By the time na buo na po yung training regulation, iba na po ang pangangailangan ng mga industries. And again, we also want to encourage more enterprise-based training, yung training po talaga sa, sa mga, mm -mm. bawa po, yung mga driven by 
uh, industries like sa automotive. Kasi po yung sa Tesla, ang comment nga po palagi is uh, pedicure, manicure, pagmamasahe. Parang mas marami po doon eh. Uh, than, the, than promoting. So he wanted also to promote yung enterprise-based training. And yung, po, yung hindi po nababanggit kasi yung upskilling and reskilling. I think yun po ang, that's more, we're interested on that. Not only improving the apprenticeship program, but more on reskilling and upskilling. We need that because of innovation and the increasing demand of enterprises for these skills. Oh, so mo, uh, uh, Your Honor. Ito, ano? Manicure, pedicure, masahe. Sa aming mahal na senador, um, of course, um, Attorney Joseph Estrada, mahal naming senador, is also aware of what TESDA is um, doing right now, especially that he's also the legal officer of the EDCOM. We are no longer focusing on the helot, manicure, pedicure, and hair styling, Your Honor, but we are also geared towards um, fourth and fifth industrial revolution. In fact, we have already mechatronics, robotics, and others. We don't focus more on that because we wanted to equip our people with um, skills that are employable and highly in demand in our time. It is also unfair for Tesla to be accused of such your honor. And we cannot also afford to just listen to that. Then didn't we accuse accused? <laughs> in fairness, also, he, sir, he, he's not accusing Tesla. No yes, matter. sir. Forgive me for saying that. But um, that's why, your honor, under the Partnerships and Linkages Office, we are working closely with industries, the 10 identified priority sector under the PDP. We are also prioritizing that. In fact, we are, we are forming the industry boards for them to be able to guide TESDA as to the review of the training regulations that we have. And aside from that, that we adapt um, existing training regulations from other countries, as well as those existing in the industries. All they have to do is to present that to us, and thereby we test that would um, recommend that for the approval of the test the board. So that's what we are also doing right now, especially that our secretary is really um, wanting to upgrade all the um, training regulations and update as well. Mahal namin nga, Senador. Dagang salamat, sir. Thank you. Mm. Your, Mr. Gajes. Yes, sir. If I may, uh, Mr. Chairman. Just to add to um, uh, Attorney Estrada's comments, that's why um, on the onset, uh, the Trade Union Congress of the Philippines proposes that um, to assist TESDA in its uh, determination of what apprenticeship, apprenticeship program should be approved, we propose the NTIPC. It's a tripartite body composed of the government, the employers, and labor. So that would uh, perhaps uh, solve the problem of uh, which and identifying which industries or which enterprises and uh, what programs, what ad uh, adequate and uh, timely programs should be approved for these apprenticeship proposed apprenticeship programs. Siguro, uh, mas mabuti mag-coordinate na lang lahat ng mga organizations ninyo sa TESTA para magkaroon tayo ng isang uh, uh, batas o bill na acceptable to everybody. No? Uh, siguro mag makipag-coordinate na lang kayo sa isa't isa. Para ano. And ang um, plano ko, after a month, pagka na-collate na, na lahat ang mga position paper na submit nyo na rito sa sa committee ito, we will still conduct one more hearing para ma-present na. And we will incorporate all your uh, inputs dun sa, sa bill para uh, tapos pag na, magkaroon tayo ng susunod na hearing, may present na lahat sa inyo for your, uh, for your uh, comments. So, Mr. Uh, Mark Villena, sir. Yeah. Uh, I represent as Associated Labor Unions Trade Union Congress of the Philippines. Uh, actually, yung mga proposals namin, ano, eh, may, may solutions din dun sa mga concerns ninyo. Na, ano. uh, we understand yung significance, the social and economic significance of yung a reformed national apprenticeship program that works. We understand that uh, it takes care of yung the future of yung uh, developing emerging industry, uh, industries, among advanced industries, uh, specific, specific, uh, in need of specific upskilled workers na specifically trained to fit certain jobs. 
And we also see yung im impact nito na ano as a yung solution siya sa the need to make uh, quality tertiary uh, education accessible to disadvantaged sectors. Uh, so it's a potential solution to yung inequality problem din ng Pilipinas. Pero uh, our foremost among labor's concerns is the protection of uh, apprentices' rights as workers and learners. So kailangan may mechanisms na malinaw na uh, yung pag-progress ng apprenticeship towards uh, uh, secure regular employment, isa yun. Uh, yung yung pag-set ng conditions for apprenticeships na maganda determined by a, a tripartite body, uh, a tripartite consultative body like the NTIPC. Uh, defining yung, for example, yung conditions and what are apprenticeable jobs na kunyari, dapat theoretically and technically proficient yung proficient, proficiency need siya para to fit that certain uh, yung parameter na ito, apprenticeable siya. Na, so, pati yung, ano, yung length of apprenticeship period, kailangan ma-determine by uh, tripartite councils and yung remuneration terms, which... Uh, in no case shall exceed, uh, sh uh, shall be lower than the minimum wage once an apprenticeship exceeds six months. We understand that an apprenticeship could run more than six months, yeah. Pag yung modern program na ano. Pero dapat may, ano eh, may conditions, may, may guarantees for yung, yung na, na hindi ma-exceed yan, hindi ma-abuso yan, at malinaw na magpa-progress siya towards regular employment. So, dapat yung, ano rin, yung, Costs of uh, social protections, such as uh, social security, work, uh, workman's compensation insurance, health insurance, and yung housing uh, program contributions, must be borne uh, solely by the employer or firm habang nagtatrabaho yung apprentice. Nagtrabador din siya eh, and learner din siya at the same time. So maganda nga kung may guarantees din sa ano eh, sa pati yung ratio of yung learning time and working time, something like 25% instruction. 75% uh, working time. Pwedeng ganun. May guarantees dapat. Uh, so dapat yung malinaw rin yung mechanisms na may malinaw na mechanism for progressing towards secure employment such that at the conclusion of the apprenticeship period deemed regular employee na yung, ano, yung, yung apprentice. Kung baga parang time served for yung, yung probation period niya parang time served during the apprenticeship. Parang ganun yun eh. So uh, yeah dapat malinaw yung mga kondisyon na yan para masiguro yung uh, yung rights ng apprenticeship uh, apprentices as uh, workers and learners are uh, protected yun lang po maraming salamat thank you uh, mr oh isa pa po uh, in no case shall the number of apprentices uh, the learners or the dual tech participants in the entire firm dapat may cap tayo sa like 15% would be yung pinaka sa amin reasonable. No more than 15% of the entire workforce should be yung, yung apprentices. And dapat nga malinaw nga may gradation. Kung baga, yung sa labor inspection, magiging part rin yan na, uh, okay, hindi ba nire-recycle lang itong firm na to, nire-recycle lang niya yung apprentices niya na hindi niya pinaprogress towards that mark. So dapat malinaw yung mga ganong condition. Salamat po. Salamat, uh, Elmer. Uh, magandang uh, araw po sa uh, news, Chairman Senator Strada at uh, Senator uh, Ramon Ravilla Jr. at uh, sa aking mga uh, kasamang resource person sa iba't bang sektor na nandito ngayon. Uh, meron ako kaming prepared position paper but uh, I, I uh, had it uh, held in abeyance kasi ang dami palang factors pa na dapat i-consider, no? Uh, Ni-review na ho namin itong uh, Senate bills na nakahilera rito, 1083, 1513, 9, 1912, at 2088. Pero mukhang sa content, kailangan na ano eh, i-assure yung uh, pag-harmonize pati sa iba't ibang versions. Uh, pero sa ang concern po namin dito, specifically yung... Uh, baka lumitaw na naman yung apprenticeship program is another form of endo no yun yung isang ano dapat i assure and then secondly uh, yung remuneration po ng mga uh, mag-avail sa apprenticeship program and as uh, mentioned earlier by our colleagues here yung uh, security of uh, tenure ng uh, naturang programa pino-propose din namin na 
baka kailangan ng i-review at i, i- uh, Iayos itong RA-7796. Ano? 1994 pa ho itong uh, test the bill at uh, marami ng pagbabago sa kalagayan ng paggawa sa Pilipinas man at sa global context. So considering all these uh, factors at lalong-lalo na po yung uh, uh, pagkatapos po ng uh, ILC, uh, I mean the ILO High Level Tripartite Mission in uh, January this year, uh, nabuo po yung broadest uh, aggregation ng uh, labor sector, no? which is now called the All Philippine Trade Unions, which uh, encompasses all ITUC affiliates in the Philippines and the Council of Global Unions. So, ayaw ko hong ma-prejudice yung uh, created uh, broadest unity of the labor sector. Kaya uh, siguro mag-uusap muna yung uh, uh, labor sector to come up with a united position. And also with the uh, uh, January high-level tripartite mission, yung uh, pag-uusap ng labor at uh, employers ay lalong na-enhance at maraming aspeto ng uh, nitong uh, tri- uh, apprenticeship bill na na, ko- na considera. No? Uh, ang isang mahalaga sigurong dapat i-consider din, one of the important uh, discussions of the uh, the International Labor Conference, which has uh, which took place only in June, ay itong uh, apprenticeship uh, committee ay dis- diniscuss yung global context ng uh, apprenticeship. No? At nandun naman si Senator Strad at that time. Siguro, importante na pinapahinggan ko yung mga presentations, mukhang hindi natatouch yung magiging impact nitong uh, current conclusions and recommendations of the uh, uh, committee on the apprenticeship of the ILO just recently. So, uh, having said those things, uh, gusto ko rin naming mag-avail siguro sa United Labor dun sa uh, binigay niyong pagkakataon sa uh, Makati Business Club and the ECOP to also avail of the one-month period to be able to submit our uh, our United Position paper no, on this, on this uh, discussion. So, yun lang po, uh, Mr. Chairperson, and thank you very much thank for you, Elmer. this uh, opportunity. Sa, on my part naman, din man natin uh, uh, pwedeng madali nito at uh, medyo masalimuot ito at uh, gusto ko pagka, uh, i, uh, pagka ipasok ko na sa plenary ito, kailangan acceptable to everybody. Okay, okay na? Ah, uh, yeah. Dr. Del, Tony Car- Del Carmen po, sir, from the uh, pop school. And uh, well, we and we in the uh, education sector, Mr. Senator, is really supportive of the apprenticeship program. No, But I think we should take this opportunity to really harmonize what we have. We have internship, we have OJT, we have DTS, and we have apprenticeship. No, And I think it's a good opportunity for us now to approach this on a more holistic way. That's why in due uh, respect to TESDA, we should also include the Commission on Higher Education no, uh, in the discussions because uh, the, there are courses that require internship. No? So, siguro po, i-design po natin yung a holistic apprenticeship program that will not only include the Tibet programs, but also the, the degree programs and maybe even the masteral programs. And even, sir, for, for uh, workers who are striving to work abroad, no? bigyan na rin natin sila ng sapat na uh, training so that hindi naman tayo mapahiya when we bring our uh, employees abroad. And a big portion of our employment are really working. We're talking about 10 million Filipinos overseas. No? So, pati yun ho, bigyan natin ng support. Ha? So, maybe we can include in the discussion the Department of Migrant Workers. No? So, tamang-tama po itong pinag-uusapan natin this morning about this uh, apprenticeship bill, but let us look at it on a more holistic approach. Yeah. No? And we support the labor sector naman po na we should give ample protection and support to our trainees or uh, students who are uh, no, no. so yun lang po thank you uh, your points are well taken uh, dr del carmen uh you said 
Torres, saan tanong? What is the difference between OJT and apprenticeship? OJT and apprenticeship. Yung, uh, if we're going to go through a real honest-to-goodness apprenticeship program, it would first look into high-level technical skills, apprenticeable trades, which can range from between six months and over. An OJT can be very short-term on the job, uh, can be two weeks, three months. Mas comprehensive ang apprenticeship program. But you can also consider... Uh, apprenticeship as OJT because it's on the job, but as but it is more uh, formal and and more defined with a contract. Your OJT can also be at any point in time, just an internship or a on the job program, short term. Thank you, uh, Yusek, for the clarification. Uh, Director Bengson. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, Senator Jingo Estrada, Senator. Uh, Bong Revilla, the resource persons, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the Philippine Hotel Owners Association expresses its gratitude to the Senate Committee on Labor, Employment, and Human Resources Development for this invitation uh, to this public hearing on the apprenticeship program. As a background, we are a non-stock, non-profit association founded in 1977, composed of hotel owners, investors, and developers. We have 60 member companies that own over 200 member hotels all over the country. We employ an estimated 40,000 workers uh, across different types of accommodation establishments, and our work covers the key strategic areas of government policy, uh, training, education, membership satisfaction, organization, and standard setting. One of our policy thrusts for the key strategic area under training and education is capacitating our own employees by continuously providing a wide range of training, educational, and development programs as part of our goal to make the Philippine hotel industry more competitive not only in Asia but around the globe. This is imperative as the competition has become even more fierce as we all recover from the pandemic. Our association has also been providing opportunities for interns, practicum students, and on-the-job trainees for those possessing the necessary skills and competencies. Our association looks forward to pursuing areas of cooperation for a stronger and more vibrant apprenticeship program under the relevant uh, Senate bills. We do recognize challenges in talent sourcing, development, and retention. We likewise recognize the urgent need to help address job mismatch and to bridge the gap between the manpower available and the needs of employers. We will therefore support measures to upgrade the apprenticeship program as proposed. We are all after the same objective, and that is to develop and expand our human resources to make them more competitive and productive. We shall make ourselves available to the meetings to be spearheaded by TESDA, as recommended by the chairman, and we shall submit our official position paper uh, within the prescribed, prescribed time frame of one month. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, bago ko po idagdag lang uh, yung aking last point, uh, gusto ko lang po sanang uh, mag-clarify and apologize to TESDA. Uh, hindi po yun uh, ang aming ibig sabihin. Gusto lang po namin emphasize na yung promotion of uh, enterprise-based uh, training, which also aligns to the new Secretary's uh, goals and objectives when we met. Gusto ko lang pong i-echo um, yung kanina pong mga nabanggit, yung overlapping uh, objectives ng mga different modalities of training, like OJT, internships, at meron pong apprenticeship. I think yung pong overlap is also caused by limitations as provided in the TESDA law, which TESDA also acknowledges na dapat pong ma-amend. Ito po yung focus kasi sa middle skill manpower, uh, middle level manpower and skills. So, siguro po yung apprenticeship can also expand to higher level skills and manpower para po madelineate talaga yung difference between in uh, in plant or enterprise based training at yung pong ginagawa po sa mga schools so that is something that we're also working on and we're also supporting TESDA on that goal salamat po thank you attorney uh, strada tuloy pa rin programa niyo na mani pedi ha tuloy pa um your honor hindi rin natin pwedeng putulin sir eh, kasi madami din tayo mga yes or no lang naman eh yes po your honor <laughs> pati masahe Opo, Your Honor, kasi madami pa din po tayong kababayan na na-employ dahil po dyan, Your Honor. Mm, Yusek, bago tayo tapos. Uh, 
para lang pong, ano, also for Tesla's programs, their programs kasi are divided into uh, in the industry-based programs, high-level skilled programs, and also programs for social equity. Mm-hmm. Kaya kailangan pa rin bigyan ng focus yung mga lower income and uh, yeah, low communities, rural communities, kung saan, minsan, kailangan yung ating course, sewing, money pedi, food, food uh, preservation, etc. Mm-hmm. But, They're more geared now dun sa industry-based programs at uh, uh, they're in fact constructing 16 innovation centers nationwide supported by an ADB pro- program. Mm-hmm. And these innovation centers will cater to high-level technical skills na sana po magiging receptacle for our apprenticeship programs. And this will in fact heighten the collaboration with the industry sectors. Okay. Thank you, uh, Yusek, and uh, maraming maraming salamat sa inyong uh, pagdalo at uh, ako'y natutuwa sa inyong uh, mga inputs, mga statements ninyo. And the committee will will conduct a technical working group uh, uh, meetings to further discuss the details of uh, the bill's concern. And we will appreciate your contributions to craft the best version of the bill that our committee will report uh, the plenary so we will uh, wait for your official position papers within a month okay ang pagkaka niyan mas sa akin one month di ba kung gusto niyo two months okay lang pero gawin lang natin one month kasi after two months bakasyon na naman ng uh, senado so ang bala ko dito maipasa itong bill dito before before the year ends hopefully uh, okay Ramiro Ramiro, salamat sa inyo. Hearing is here by adjourned.